Now I want to drop this video and let you guys know my opinion on Muslims. Now I see everyone else is all the time on YouTube, Facebook, you know, etc. And you know, it, it, it's something people ask me about all the time. So I thought, you know, it's about time for me to let you know what my take is on it. Um, some of you will absolutely disagree and that's fine. You know, you're entitled to your opinion and I'm entitled to mine. But if you just listen to what I have to say and what I've experienced hands on, you at least understand why I feel the way I do, okay? Um, like I said, you don't have to agree, but just hear me out, okay? Um, some of you know and some of you don't. I traveled in the Middle East back in 2003. Um, I kicked it with all sorts of different types of people from, you know, Shiites to Sunnis, Kurds, Christians, Jews, you know, all living in the Middle East. Um, now, one thing you got to realize when you speak about Muslims, right? You cannot put them all into one category. No more than you can Christians. I mean, look at the different types of Christians and beliefs within the different groups. You get Catholics, Protestants, uh, Baptists, Pentecostals, Mormons, you know, so on and so forth. I mean, heck, even within the subgroups, you've got the different sexes, got different beliefs and stuff like that, like the Pentecostals, you know, which is like a a renewal slash break off of the Protestants. You got the Southern Pentecostals, you know, those are the cats that mess with the rattlesnakes and all of that stuff. Where the other Pentecostals, they, you know, they're not trying to kiss no rattlesnakes and all of that. I mean, Westboro Baptist Church, I mean, they do not represent all Baptist churches, you know. So to say all Muslims are the same, I mean, it, it's just crazy because it's so complex. Um, when I was in the Middle East in 2003, you know, I got to experience some pretty eye-opening things that I would have never even imagined had I not witnessed them firsthand because of the information we get here in the U.S., you know, which, you know, was basically the reason I went there in the first place, and, you know, was to see for myself what was really going on. I mean, Christians and Muslims all living together? I mean, man, imagine that. I mean, and that's what I saw in Iraq, believe it or not. I mean, there were Muslim women who walked around with that, they had scarves and even smoking cigarettes. Now, the reason why I bring up cigarettes is because, you know, I was walking one night around Baghdad with a female friend of mine who was smoking a cigarette and the guy came up and he was like, you know, women shouldn't do that because women are precious, you know. He wasn't forceful or anything like that. He just said his piece and went on about his business. You know, I hung with families and picnicked in Samar at the Great Tower. You know, I got to go inside the Golden Mosque in Karbala, you know, where they have a shrine of an important cat there, you know, to their the Muslim religion. Um, we did run into a little trouble there because of someone I was traveling with decided to pop off some photos right in inside of that. You know, anyhow, but um, I met some hardliners who looked at me with disgust, but because, you know, uh, basically because they would look at me because of my hairs a lot of times but but you know curiosity got the best of them so they would always ask me you know they couldn't help but ask me you know uh, why you know why you got your hair like that you know in which I would respond Bush didn't like or Bush doesn't like or whatever you know and they would laugh you know and it was always kind of like a little icebreaker anyhow I mean they had the uh, young Sunnis and Shiites they were all fascinated by the dreadlocks as well you know and ask if they could touch them for the most part you know uh, I visited Christian churches and Jewish monuments there. I mean, it wasn't all this hate back then, you know, that like was being portrayed in the media. Um, in Jordan, I get pulled off the street into restaurants and seated at the owner's table and we would eat and talk politics, you know, have a big feast and all this stuff. They always wanted to talk to me and they were always inquisitive on the American people and, you know, and, which most people were all through the Middle East, wherever I went. But um, they always wanted to know, did, you know, all Americans hate them and love war and all this kind of stuff, you know. And I tell them, you know, some did, but it was because they didn't know them or were being told what to believe. You know, I always try to get the point across to them, you know, Americans can't be put into one category. as There's so many different types of people here with different beliefs, likes, dislikes, you know. Some are good. Some are bad, just like Muslims, just like Christians, atheists, Russians, Chinese, etc. You know, when one travels the world and experiences different cultures, you know, different beliefs, you can't help but come to the logical conclusion that there's good people and there's bad people. I mean, I personally believe it's all about to divide and conquer. That's what they do, man. Make everyone hate each other because of their differences. It doesn't matter, you know. It's been going on for thousands of years and still works well today. 
Um, so anyhow, that's my take on Muslims. And, you know, as a matter of fact, it's also my take, the same take that I have on Christians, atheists, Buddhists, uh, anarchists, communists, white people, black people, tiny folk, big folk, any folk, man. There's some good and some bad. I mean, unless we're talking about a group like serial killers or something like it, then I'd have to agree that they're all bad, you know. Just like I've never met any group or been to any country where everyone is all good. It just doesn't work that way. You see what I'm saying, people? Anyhow, we got to keep it real in 2015, man. Anyhow, I'm changing the channel. That's my view, and I'm out.